Next on our list is PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, also known as trauma and related disorders. The main signature here is experiencing a specific traumatic event, one or more traumatic events, and then having a kind of re-experiencing uh, of those traumatic events after the fact, and uh, then kind of the inability to move beyond the, the trauma. Uh, and so this is associated with negative changes in mood and cognition, detachment, loss of interest, uh, changes in physiological arousal levels, reactivity, sleep, irritability, reckless, uh, recklessness, and self-destructive behavior. So this is, again, one of these situations where you have a different etiology, a different onset of uh, an experience, but then it leads to uh, anxiety and depression kinds of uh, sequelae, so sort of follow-up events and, and symptoms after the fact. And so, um, of course, there's the specific aspect of the trauma, but then the general characteristics are very much uh, comorbid and overlapping with anxiety and depression symptoms. And so that's, again, consistent with another way of kind of getting into this overall similar kind of attractor state. There's been a lot of discussion about PTSD among people in the military, uh, obviously uh, experiencing kind of specific aspects of trauma, particularly women experiencing sexual assault type of events are very, uh, unfortunately, common sources of trauma. And uh, overall, the prevalence is about 1.3% uh, per year. Specific, very well-known traumatic events such as the 9-11 terror attacks, you know, somewhat remarkably, 6% uh, of people developed PTSD in the wake of those events. And so it gives you a way of assessing, you know, in fact, people are kind of remarkably resilient in the face of these very strong traumatic events. Next, we're going to look at OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. So obsessiveness refers to kind of repeated patterns of thought and compulsive refers to repeated behaviors. And essentially, you know, everybody kind of is familiar with this overall phenomenology of, for example, repeated hand washing to prevent infection from germs or repeatedly checking, for example, that the door is locked or the stove is off. So this, like many of these disorders, is somewhat heterogeneous. There's many different subtypes of OCD. And one subtype is associated with this kind of feelings of incompleteness. And so it's kind of like there's these insatiable kind of feelings like something has not been uh, satisfied. And this is uh, particularly interesting from the perspective of, you know, how is it that the brain recognizes when you've actually achieved something? How do you know when you've done something? That ties into uh, our dopamine systems and our goal learning pathways um, when we try to understand how these mechanisms work in terms of the brain mechanisms it's really important for our brain to recognize that, you know, at that point when we've achieved something, kind of, you know, what the overall assessment of our accomplishment was, and that determines how much dopamine you get. And so this disorder in that system gives us an interesting kind of uh, window into understanding how that system works in general. And this idea that certain people may have that kind of basic inability to recognize that they've achieved something and can move on beyond it is, you know, a really important piece of the puzzle. Another major kind of subtype of OCD is harm avoidance. And here, the, the basic logic of the goal is, it kind of sets up this incompleteness scenario. So, you know, how do you know when you've successfully avoided some negative outcome, right? So far you have, but who knows if it's not still gonna happen, right? And so anything that involves a kind of avoidance goal or avoidance outcome that you're trying to achieve is particularly subject to this problem of incompleteness, this feeling like, well, I just am not quite sure if I've successfully avoided getting sick. You know, I better go wash my hands again because that'll make, make it even more likely that I'm, you know, avoided the, the catching a cold. So continuing to uh, perform these compulsive behaviors is almost kind of natural and it's actually kind of interesting that 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 people tend to avoid this kind of behavior because it is such a compelling problem within these 
two different broad categories. There's these more specific subtypes, uh, symmetry, cleaning, forbidden thoughts, and hoarding. And so symmetry is more kind of like trying to organize things more abstractly. Cleaning is obviously just trying to, to make sure everything's super clean. Uh, forbidden thoughts is kind of, you know, being tormented by these ideas of uh, kind of, you know, am I going to think some bad thought and then uh, kind of uh, trying to not think those thoughts. And then hoarding is like, do I have enough? Maybe I need more uh, sort of that kind of thought. I, I don't want to run out. Um, and so I want to have everything I need.